Hey, what's happening, YouTube? Uh, here today with Scar 17S. This is uh, not mine. This is actually my buddy's. He was nice enough to let me borrow it and do a little review on it for him. Um, not many people have these, and it's it's basically due to the price. Um, these things are very very expensive. It's uh, not a cheaply made weapon, and you're gonna pay <laughs> good money for one. I believe they retail anywhere from 2,700 up to three grand, depending on what you get. Um, this one's just the the 17S model. It's got short stroke gas piston like the rest of them. Um, 16 inch barrel, if I recall correctly, which is uh, perfect. I mean, it's you could use it for CQB, you could use it for mid range. I mean, all the way around. I don't know if this would be ideal for CQB, just because the 7.62 round is uh, known to penetrate, but definitely a very very good weapon. Um, super light. Uh, the lower receiver is actually made of high grade polymer, so. That attributes to the lightness. The stock's made of the same. Pretty much uh, the upper's aluminum alloy and uh, the barrel and gas system is pretty much the only thing made of steel besides the sights, apart from the sights. And uh, so this gun, I think it's a little over seven pounds unloaded, which is incredibly light. Anyone who's uh, messed around with battle rifles, the G3 is a heavy weapon, PTRs are heavy weapons. Um, AR-10s, they're still heavier than these. Even the one I have, the Recon, it's still a little bit heavier than this. And this actually, the recoil impulse is much lighter than on an AR-10. Just the way it's set up, the gas piston system, it really attributes to very nice felt recoil. It goes directly back into the shoulder because the uh, muzzle's in line with the rest of the weapon. So it just goes right back into the shoulder. There's not a lot of muzzle climb. Um, the muzzle brake's incredible. It really does attribute to keeping on target, but uh, on the negative side, it is incredibly loud. I mean, uh, probably louder than uh, AR-10. I mean, I think the only thing that might be louder is a 50, to be honest with you. But uh, overall, I mean, if you don't mind the noise, it's definitely well worth it. Um, probably the best money spent. I mean, I didn't spend it personally, but... I think it's well worth the money if I had that kind of money to cough up for one of these. I'm going to do a shoot and review with this and I'm going to take it apart for you guys, show you some of the features. Um, very easy to disassemble. And uh, we'll definitely uh, get some rounds downrange with this. I have some reloads built up for it and uh, there's some pretty uh, beefy reloads. I try to get as much velocity and uh, ballistic capability out of a 16 inch barrel that I can so I do a lot of reloads um, most conventional ammunitions loaded down a little bit much for me so I go ahead and uh, do that but I'll show you guys oh, the weapon is clear I'll show you guys some of the features on this thing um, he actually installed this angled foregrip on there which I really like it uh, it's very good it feels good in the hand and this gun is light I could hold it up with one hand I can put the pistol grip, actually fold over the stock, and shoot it with one hand, and you can actually do that. So, this is a very, very good weapon. I'll show you guys this muzzle brake that has some absolutely ridiculous blast coming out of the end of it. You guys will see uh, when I get this thing on camera shooting. But yeah, he actually put a uh, new charging handle on it. I'll try to get in on here. It's kind of a large weapon, but... This uh, charging handle he actually put on, he installed that, it's aftermarket. Um, and the single point sling from Troy. It's a quick release, which I really, really like this. You just push down on it and you pull it right out. That's a pretty cool feature, very easy to handle. It already comes with a sling mount if you want to put like a conventional, uh, like the two prong single points on there. But I will go ahead and show you guys how this thing disassembles because it is simple and uh, very easy to maintain. So basically you got this push pin right up here. You can just push that out. And you got to slide the pistol grip up and off. So you see how it clicked up? Now you can pull it off. Alright, now that you got that off, your stock's able to come off. I just give that a little tap, it comes right off. Very simple. In the back here, this is your spring housing group. This comes out. I mean, it's easier if you push the charging handle. It'll come right out. There's your spring. And once you get it back to this point, you actually have to remove your charging handle pin there. That comes out. Take the rest of your assembly out here. Now once you have that out, 
you can actually disassemble this bolt further by hand. So if you actually want your bolt out, there's a little pin right here that holds in your firing pin group. And what I like to do is you can just take this little charging handle and you just push on it a little bit. Give it a little bit of force. And it pops right out, like so. And once you have that out, grab your firing pin, pull your firing pin out. And then your bolt carrying group, similar to the AR style, M16 style, and you just pull this uh, pin out that actually holds your firing pin in. And then you got your bolt and extractor and access to everything else. The one thing that's really neat about this, this uh, short stroke gas piston system, is that you hardly get any carbon on here. Um, this bolt face, I actually fired this yesterday, and I didn't clean it intentionally, just to show you guys that this stays clean. So this bolt's pristine, smooth, you have no carbon buildup, and it'll just keep on cycling. And that's all due to the gas system. It's a very smart design. One thing you gotta make sure when you put this back in is the uh, extractor has to be on the right hand side. Just because that's the side that the rounds eject on. So you just put that in there. Got your bolt carrying group in here. All right. I'm gonna throw that firing pin back in, same way. The one thing you also have to make sure of is that this uh, bolt carrier uh, holder there, that the uh, firing pin goes into it. So if this is sitting vertical, like right there, the firing pin won't go in. So you need to make sure you have that on there. And once you got that in, your pin slides back in, and you'll see where it goes, because it's got a little step down there. And you just push it in. And you can manually just press this in, and it'll stay in. And then uh, just reassembly. And that's pretty much as far as you have to break this weapon down to be able to properly clean it. Not like it needs a lot of cleaning, or any cleaning at all for that matter, but that's how you do it if you want to do it. And then you got to line up this hole. Put that back in. There you go, charging handles back in there. Now this part right here, it's actually grooved in one way so that you can only get it in in a certain direction. So. See if I can show you guys this. It goes up and under there. It's in. Now back to the stock. Um, the only complaints I've ever heard about this particular firearm is the stock. It's actually mainly the cheek piece. Um, it's got a very good butt pad on it. It's not like this gun has a heavy recoil or anything, but a lot of people don't seem to like that cheek piece. Um, especially if you have optics on it, a scope, anything like that. They don't seem to like it. And once you get this thing in here, it just slides on in. Once you have it in, just push your pin back in. Done. We'll functions test it, make sure it's good. Okay, bolt stays to the rear good. I'm gonna put it on safe, attempt to fire, doesn't fire, and it fires. And the last thing, audible reset. Cock it, let go of the trigger. Heard the pop, reset. So that's all good to go. Now, another thing I want to point out on this weapon is you can actually swap out barrels really easily. So, this right here is what holds your uh, barrel in. If you unscrew that, you could actually swap out barrels in roughly five minutes, a little less than that, just making sure you get everything lined up right. So, if you wanted to, or they had the aftermarket barrels, you know, like a longer barrel, you wanted to turn this into uh, more of a designated marksman's rifle, you could easily do that. Another thing I want to point out is the sights. I'll see if I can get these lined up. They pop up pretty easily. There's just a little push button right here. You guys can see that? Pop it right up. The back sight, it just folds right up like that. And it has adjustable elevation and windage, which is terrific. Very, very simple to adjust to for close range, long range, whatever you want. And it has two different style peeps. So this thing does um, absolutely cover every base. I mean, and it has left and right magazine release. All controls on this weapon are ambidextrous. It has left and right safety. So you can use it lefty or righty. And I have shot this left-handed just to see if the brass would hit you in the face. It does not. 
this shell deflector right here does an excellent job at pushing the brass out. So it'll miss your head. I mean, you can shoot it lefty or righty. And uh, I'll take this outside, fire a couple shots for you guys, let you get a little look at it. I'm not going to fire a lot. I don't have a whole lot of 7.62 on me at the moment, but we'll get shooting with this thing. And not to mention, it's very cold. All right. Let's see here. I'll zoom in down range there so you guys can get a look. It's about 50 yards away. It's just a pot hanging up there. I'm going to shoot at that. And that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching.